Welcome everyone to our New Year's special fireside chat on the future of data integration. My name is Elizabeth Hamming. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, I'm the webinar specialist here at Safe Software. And I'm very honored today to host today's discussion alongside our two co-founders, Don Murray and Dale Lutz. So thank you so much both for taking the time and, to yeah, join this us. Is fun. This is fun. Yeah. All right, before we dive in, just briefly introducing the platform we're in today, if you are newer to it, we have a help button on the bottom left there if you need any help troubleshooting any audio or video issues. So click that for four simple steps there. Share your emoji reactions throughout with the bottom middle button there. We will have a poll in the middle of the webinar, so keep an eye on that polls tab when that does come yeah. up. The chat, keep letting us know where you're tuning in from. And then last but not least, the questions tab. We will have an opportunity for questions to be answered live at the end here. We'll have a portion for that with Dawn and Dale. So drop those in as we go. So during the hour today, we are set to dive into the future of data integration and also trends within this space as we start this new year. We are celebrating SAFE's 30th anniversary. And as such, we've laid out some questions for Dawn and Dale that reflect on some pivotal moments along SAFE's journey, as well as future challenges and also opportunities that they see in this space to come. To follow this discussion, we'll provide you with some resources and then also time for you to ask Don and Dale questions, as I mentioned, during our Q&A portion. So let's dive right in. SAFE serves over 25,000 organizations worldwide across 128 countries and just celebrated 30 years, as we've mentioned here. And so we'll start off with some 30th anniversary reflections. So Don Dale, December marked this impressive milestone. Can you share with the audience some significant milestones and achievements along this journey? Yeah. Do you want to go first, Dale? Do you want me to go first? Why don't you take a crack at it, Don, and then I'll uh, see. Sure. You. Yeah. I mean, um, it's been an amazing journey, first of all. I mean, when Dale and I started, um, we were lucky in the sense that computers just got fast enough to really do anything significant with data. And since then, there's been so many milestones. Um, we can all remember, you know, um, we can all remember when Google Earth came out. Um, mm. That was definitely significant. And for the first time, everybody, you know, could could see spatial data in the context. And that really um, increased awareness um, for people with spatial data. Um, also, the cloud, the cloud, you know, came on and um, and for safe software, again, we're sitting in a, a good a good spot because what do we do? We chase the data. So we find out where people are are you know putting the data. And then um, and Dale and I, right from the very beginning, we always said we're going to be agnostic, platform agnostic. So it didn't matter what operating system we were using. And um, and um, how many operating systems did we support at one time, Dale? Well, like, it, 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 like in the early days it was HP UX, AIX, um, DEC IBM. Alpha. Yeah. Deck Alpha, IBM. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah. AIX. Solaris. Solaris, of course. Linux, yeah. Windows. We actually supported the original, like the old Mac OS before Mac OS 9. Um, we yeah. had a little bit, yeah. we had an OEM on that actually. So yeah. Yeah. the advantage to us of all those platforms, of course, is that it just made FME way more robust because yeah. you can get away with stuff on one operating system, bugs in your software. But if you're on another one, they're certainly going to show, them, oh show their face. And we found that in modern times, when we recently, meaning in the last few years, went over to ARM, then we found yeah. some new things that were lurking in there. But also, we, we actually didn't have that big of a problem moving to ARM because we were set up for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been, you know, when we think of cloud, we didn't just say, oh, we're only going to support one cloud. We just we decided, again, we're going to support AWS, Azure, Google, you know, and make sure that we run everywhere. And then new deployment models came around. So there's so many things that happened along the way. And and yeah. um, Dale and I are both technologists. And so we're excited by technology. So our strategy has always been, let's support and embrace all new technology. Let's not be one of those companies that gets washed up on the beach 
um, of not embracing the next wave. So, yeah. Yeah. And in terms of uh, some of the safe milestones that I thought were interesting is in 19, uh, 1996 already, we, we have evidence that we had thought of something like Workbench um, and that didn't, we didn't have the resources to pursue that until really 1999. And then um, it really made its sort of debut kind of a bit faltering out of the gate in 2000, probably by about 2002, it became yeah. uh, good. That's one thing Don and I realized is there's there's a concept of a minimum viable product, but if you actually put stuff out there before you're at that point, a little too early, you can kind mm -hmm. of turn off your user base. And I think that the first workbench was probably a little too early, um, mm -hmm. but hey, we, we started to learn from it and uh, yeah. made improvements. But anyway, by 2002, it was certainly usable and then, mm -hmm. It continuing mm -hmm. its continuous evolution since. And I think the other one, Don, is the the uh, the transformation of the spatial direct web-based data distribution product into yeah. the more general purpose FME server in 2008. That was a huge yeah. one. That was a huge one and enabled us to do so much. And we just, um, you know, spatial direct um, was a date, was a clip zip, zip and ship, basically a data delivery system. And um, underneath it was powered by FME, but yeah. we did a great job of hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we had this, we renamed yeah. it and then also added a few things. And now it has automations. It has server apps. It has, yes. you know, new exciting new things that are coming that we'll talk about probably a little later. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the, the server apps was a, was an amazing and important innovation that came, I don't know how many years ago, six years ago now. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. uh, and there's some action. Yeah, there's great stuff to come. I don't know if we get to talk about the future very much in this talk, but uh, certainly yeah. FME server isn't done. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're and, pretty excited about yeah. it. And, and I think the other thing was rec we really enjoy what we're doing. So providing, you know, leading edge support and having just an amazing community, which we support an amazing yeah. team here. We call it the restaurant model. And I think that's another thing that just separates us from from all the yeah. other companies out there. You know, most companies, once you engage their support, you feel like they just want to get you off the phone. And, yeah. um, and then we're not like that. And we will continue to, to do that. Yeah. Oh, the new branding. I mean, that's another oh, big one. Oh, yeah, that's true, Don. That's a modern significant one. Yeah, it's less than, a, you know, it's absolutely. actually, what is it, eight months ago or something? And and for those yeah. of us at SAFE, it feels like it's been eternity. Like we can't hardly remember the time you know, before. And, um, and it's still under ongoing. I mean, there's so much, you know, to do. And if you um, talk with Suzanne, she could just um, talk for a week on all the things that are, that are going to happen as uh, we continue to invest in that. So it's great. But neither Don nor I have earned the significant little orange dot that goes by our name at the safe. I have tried so many times. I've even submitted my resume to marketing so many times, but it just, uh, I, I stumble. So we, we can't. Story, I'm not a marketer. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get the orange dot. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. For those in the audience that may not be familiar, our orange dot represents that we're brand ambassadors. You're for a brand safe. ambassador. And one time I had the orange dot, it just kind of... And I actually got reached out to, well, from our director of marketing when they were on vacation and they said, you are not worthy to use the orange dot. And I was hurt. I was hurt. But uh, but there was reasons why. And so then, I, unfortunately, I had to agree on each reason. So, yeah, so I, I gave up the orange. Dot. But, but I still have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a goal. It's yeah. good to have a goal. Yeah. So there we go. All right. Awesome. Yeah, it's really amazing to hear how FME and SAFE both have evolved with each milestone yeah. and platform over the years. And that's a good point, Elizabeth. It hasn't just yes. been the product. It's a, that's a really good point. It's been the company has evolved as well. Yes. And, and, um, and it's a, yeah, it's great. We didn't actually mention either, Don, like on a technical level, the uh, addition of data types like raster at one yeah. point. And I, I famously said yeah. we would never do raster and had to eat my words and I've stopped saying <laughs> never. Um, but then after that, we did 3D. We were actually very early on the 3D side yeah. of things, yeah. way ahead of the market. LIDAR and, um, of course, AR stuff. I know we're going to talk about yeah. that a little bit later. But yeah. the different yeah. the landscape of data types has also changed. And the yeah. architecture, I'm going to say, Don, that you came up with, actually, the architecture was able to really easily let these things slot in. And yeah. um, that, that, that was a key piece as well. And now, of course, you know, we have anything with a REST API, right? Which yes. Which we can connect to. And, yeah. So, yeah. So that's been a big, big change. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, our next question here. Um, Don, you had mentioned a little earlier the restaurant model. How have you seen the company's mission and vision evolved over these past three decades? And what has been the driving force behind 
Yeah, I think, you know, in in many ways, the company's mission has stayed the same. Dale and I, um, really right from the start, we we really enjoy helping people solve um, Mm -hmm. problems with data. Mm -hmm. So right right from the start, I think it has evolved as um, early on, it was a desktop product that was literally people would come up and you would ask them what their favorite editor was. And so we, um, you know, we realized that that was a limited market. And so the vision has been to expand, make it easier to use, yeah. really focus on doing as much as humanly possible with no code. And we have a little bit of a riff when we go low code versus no code. Low code is still code, you know. And so we really work to make it easier and easier to use. And then the other thing is, is that working with data, it's, you know, it's it, it can be challenging. So we have this amazing team that is focused on um on helping you and learning and it helps us get better too because when we're helping somebody with a problem we learn okay we can do that better and um, we never for an instant think that our product is perfect or that we got it all figured out that's kind of a red flag if you ever think you have something figured out boy oh boy you're probably uh about to learn hard that you don't and um and so yeah and i think just having fun we we have fun right i mean everybody i mean i you know I love what I do. I can't believe I actually, you know, they they keep giving me a key code to come into this building, but uh, it's just fun. And our partners are fun and our community is fun and we all work together. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with what Don said. You know, I know I think long, over the years we've had different sort of slogans for the company or bylines, spatial ETL experts that came at some point. But I remember some at one point, um, some marketing um consultant said that they looked us all over and said that there's two words that that explain us and that's called expert exuberance and actually that's another piece i would say is that along this journey we have assembled a team of amazing experts we we have deep deep expertise at safe that in a wide range of like actually an extremely broad range of areas that we've gained by helping all of you our customers solve Mm -hmm. hard problems Mm -hmm. over all these years and so um you know I, i i'm very very proud of the kind of intellectual capital that our yeah. team brings to the table every single day that, yeah. that really yeah. help all of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like we definitely stay true to our core values while also mm-hmm. adapting to change, which is a recipe for yeah. success for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the next question here, looking back at 30 years of innovation and growth for the company, what are some of the lessons that you both have learned that you'd like to share with emerging companies that might be on the call today? I'll start maybe, Don. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I would say that uh, innovation <laughs> and um, in quotes, success is not a linear process. There are what you think is going to happen, what you think is going to be your home run may only be a base hit. And uh, but when you get to that base, suddenly maybe the uh, the the uh, catcher fumbles the ball and you can get a couple other, uh, that's my base. I'm not a big baseball guy, but got got too far in that analogy. But but uh, what I'm really trying to say is that many times Don and I have thought this is going to be a huge thing and it wasn't, but the byproduct of having pursued that ended up being the big thing. Yeah. 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 And I would say a couple of things for Dan and I going to talk about this is hiring people with other skills sooner rather than later. Yes. Like Dale and I literally in the early days when somebody ordered, we would run up the photocopier, drive over to Kinko's uh, or FedEx and, and then, then ship it. Like we probably could have been doing better things with our time, like yeah. maybe producing more of the product. Um, yeah. So, you know, so, so that's one thing. The other thing is you do, you know, you have to, you have to um, realize that you probably know your business better than some big guys who are telling you what to do. So there's lots of funny stories that go at safe where we had one big vendor that come in and said, if you, if you only supported my product and it was $99, we could sell a million of those. And so we're like, Holy moly, a million of those times $99. I don't know how to do the math, but that's almost a hundred million. I'm going to say. And so we did this thing and uh, I think we sold two. And, um, and so, and there's lots of stories about that. So trust yourself. You do know more about what your emerging company's focus and vision is and um and stick with that also don't chase to try to be another company like find your find out what you do well and stick stick with that right you know when you think about you know obviously the biggest company apple what is apple apple sticks with what it does right it, and it does it when apple goes in on something they go in whole hog and they they go in to own it and 
and um, they're selling experience, which we also sell experience with our restaurant model. But yeah, so anyway. So I like making 90s movie references. And I don't know how many people in the audience. It's tough now these days, Don, when you I make might not even movie. be alive. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll give it my best. But if you haven't seen this movie, City Slickers, uh, the, the, and I, I'm curious how many in the, in the audience have seen City, City Slickers. But anyway, uh, yeah. yeah, and th there's a lesson there that Curly says, you got to find that one thing. What's yeah. that? Where's my finger? I can't look at that. I'm being masked out. There it is. Yeah. One thing. You got to find that one thing and go after yeah. it. And I think... Um, a few times over the years, we tried to sell um, variations of FME into niche things, and overwhelmingly, it was a pain yeah. and not yeah. worth it. And so yeah. what ended up being the right thing was the one thing, and yeah. uh, we learned that. So, so if you're starting your company, you got to figure out what that one thing is, and as yeah. Don says, go all in on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. it sounds like trust yourself, your team, and your company's strengths, key things yeah. there. It looks like not a single soul has seen City Slickers, Don. Yeah, no, I have, Dale. <laughs> I've got a lot of thumbs up in the audience. Here. Oh, here they're oh, here coming they, now. Here they I had to it's really, I had to people really. People don't want to admit it. You know, that's probably the first thing. It wasn't the best movie. It's, you know, but uh, I've seen Sharknado. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the City Slickers, I'm not sure, Westworld, Don, if you saw that, but there was a City Slickers Westworld crossover video okay. where, they, where they hauled out Billy Crystal and he did a little uh, thing there. So that was pretty fun. Anyway, okay. let's go. Let's let Elizabeth have the floor. Okay. <laughs> All right. Our next question, our last question in this set is, as Safe Software has now reached our 30th anniversary, what are goals and visions for the next phase of the company's evolution? Yeah, so I think I can dive in on this. So yeah, I mean, follow the data. Again, going back to what we do well, um, we, you know, we've introduced some things like remote engines, for example. People say, why did you do that? And it's because we want to follow the data. And the best place for FME is where the data is. And so our goal is always to move um, things as close to the, the data as possible. Of course, there's two big things, and I'll let... Um, that that both start with the letter a and both end with the letter i that um yeah. that really is key to where we're going and um you know and data is fundamental to uh you know to both of those and so we're super excited again as a company that goes all in um we're not watching to see what happens with either of these technologies we're excited we know our how we fit in and um, and we're we are so convinced this is just going to supercharge um, our our growth. So yeah, yeah. so I'll let yeah. Dale talk about what those are. Well, I think Don's hinting at the the generative AI and the ways that that there's a, just a myriad of ways that that can manifest inside of the ecosystem of FME and our user base, all of you. It, it's as we've said at Safe, we should view the AI capabilities as if we all have a team helping us. And that team is also part of FME as well. And so yeah. anyway, uh, we, I won't spoil too much, but this is going to be an exciting year um, to see that the arc of how we can keep improving the way we work with that for all of you inside FME. But the other the other one is API. Um, mm -hmm. And so open API, the, the for a long time, we've known that FME is an amazing tool for consuming APIs, but we were always waiting for a standard to emerge that would be the way right. that APIs are described. And there was RAML. There was a few different attempts over the years that we sort of looked at. Um, I remember long ago wanting to scrape form definitions um, yeah. off of uh, websites. Uh, but today, there's a wonderful thing that's, re that's achieved pretty good maturity and adoption, and that's open API. Yeah. And so we got AI. Open AI, <clears throat> open AI being one of them, and then API and Open API being the spec. So it, it leads for, to tongue twisters for Don and I, but we really see um, those two things laying a great foundation yeah. for a big chunk of the next uh, innovation at, at SAFE. Yeah, yeah, and those two are related, like they're not disconnected. And so you're going to see over the next while, how we're bringing those two things together and, um, yeah. and safe. We worked hard to make data available, you know, connect different applications together. But now what we're going to do is, you know, in the next evolution is make it easy for organizations to put an API on top of all their data. So then they can build their own applications directly on, on anything and connect it to, you know, so super, super exciting. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. Don, am I, am I allowed to say that amazing thing you've shown me in your office where you've brought those two things together or not? You sure can, yeah. And when when is our, we have an, before we forget, we have an exciting AI update coming. When is that webinar, Elizabeth? We do, yes. That'll be um, about mid to late February. So coming yeah, around the corner so, here. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to see, and um, if you've seen our previous AI ones, um, we have these things called rebroadcast, but this space is moving so fast. Every time we do it, it's brand new. And this one is the most exciting of all, I have to say. And yeah. the first one, you know, I, I had, you know, I had a bio problem. And uh, and the next one, I was even more excited. So I knew I better do something before. And the third one, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Maybe I'll start growing hair, Dale. I'll be so excited. It's, it's <laughs> it, it, We can all tune in and see. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. Um, but, but I will say, Don showed me an amazing um, configuration he'd set up where he's using AI to generate open API specs. Yeah. And it was quite revolutionary. And and yeah. um, anyway, it's just a, an example yeah. of like in a few minutes, Don and I did something that would have taken, if you were to do it by hand, I, I think it would have been a few days of work days, in literally a few yeah. minutes and literally yeah. a few minutes. Um, yeah. And so yeah. feeding that into the ecosystem, it's just going to be so powerful what, what's going to be able yeah. to be created. Yeah. yeah. So. Fantastic. Yeah, we've opened the can of beans on the next section here. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know we've been describing a bit about transformative trends in data integration. Sounds like APIs and AI are big, big key players here. Yeah, they're the, definitely the most transformative, I would say. And you're yeah. going to see us embrace it right from authoring all the way to being able to use it inside your workflows, right? So oh, as actually, Elizabeth. Yeah. I do have something else to say there um, on Q1, and and that is the uh, another thing that I think is kind of a sleeper um, trend is the move to cloud native data formats. Uh, and mm -hmm. so basically, data formats that have been engineered for storing huge amounts of data up on the commodity blob storage of cloud providers and letting clients work with them super intelligently without sucking the whole thing down. And yeah. You know that trend uh, or that that innovation contrasted with the um, the the the, uh, the explosion of data volumes. I think that the one two punch is very very necessary so that these huge data volumes that are out there and and getting bigger and bigger all the time can be accessed and utilized without sucking the whole thing across the wire every time you need to use it. So yeah. I know we've got another webinar coming up on, yeah. on cloud native things. That must be when, at the end of January, Elizabeth? January 17th, and I've just made a shameless plug for it in the chat there. So yes. nice. register nice. now. Yeah, this is like we're like advertising. This is like- Yeah, I know. That's, this is that like was part of the channel. <laughs> product placement. But yeah, I think that that, that, that one, um, and, and in the last year, I think those formats really became mature. So, yeah. Um, yeah. and there's there's like yeah. five of them ish, and uh, yeah. and then there's some technology around that that we're looking to adopt and and work into FME. And I've talked with Don about this, the DuckDB, which lets yeah. you do database operations on on stuff that's stored up in the cloud without actually hauling it down. And so I think that's a key one as well to to see how people will integrate and work with that. Fantastic. All right. And I know we have started to discuss this as well. How is SAFE contributing to or shaping these current trends in the data integration landscape? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we embrace them all. I mean, honestly, like there's some standards out there that, that I know that SAFE software and FME is the reason that these standards are successful. Um, there's one I won't mention the name where basically the, the, the producer of the standard uses FME. Yeah. And anybody who wants to read it um, is told to get FME. It's an open standard, so um, you know other companies are welcome to read and write it. But you know, at the value proposition we provide, nobody's really you know interested in doing that. So I think um, we're also a member of um, OGC. Yeah, and so um, so we we support that group. We're a member of, of various consortiums, um, the airport um, consortium on digital twins. Whew. Yeah. So, um, and things like, and that's another trend too, digital twins, right. That yes. we're, we're embracing, but, uh, yeah. So again, we follow the data and we're excited about like data. Dale just, um, 
mentioned um, cloud native when that comes out that's awesome we're like yeah let's support let's support everything right so yeah we, we actually also are big supporters of, of relevant open source uh, yeah. developments and quite often yeah. I mean for us when we see something that we think is a very important and good for the community we may well fund open source to get it out there to increase the penetration yeah. of this great thing and then of course yeah. we incorporate that in FME because we believe we can add additional value yeah. on top of that yeah for all yeah. of you. So that's yeah. that's a thing that we do. I know um, we are fairly active in a variety of different OGC initiatives. Yeah. We have one staff member at least that's, yeah. um, that tracks those very, very closely. So yeah. we've always um, done our best to not just follow, but try to influence where it makes sense. We're not gonna go out ahead, but when, there, when the bus is rolling, we will help push it, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And if somebody's it like and it's back on the open source thing, if somebody's invented some really great technology, you know, we would rather support it. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, there's so many things for us to do and everybody yes. to do. We don't need to um, you know, and we also work really well with a lot of other companies. And I always yes. say, you know, if we draw a Venn diagram, you pick any company and you draw draw, draw a Venn diagram of safe and that company, there's gonna be some intersection. We can either all focus on the intersection or we can focus on how much better we are together and the bigger you know problems we can solve when we work together and and um, we always focus on the bigger let's solve the bigger problem and let customers decide about the stuff that overlaps we're not our goal isn't to go after you know a partner's um business yeah better together sounds like a great slogan perhaps at least for safe if not also a political party <laughs> <laughs> Mm. No, it is true. Better together is a, is a good, that's yeah, actually yeah. what we've all, that, as a guiding principle, that's actually what we've, we followed. I, I've never heard it articulated till today by Don, but that really is true. Yeah. 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 And we've always said, we'll make, let's make, when you have a partner, let's work together to make money with our partner, not from our partner, right? Yeah, like so yeah. many of these partner programs, you want to be a partner, they want to bill you annually. And we're like, it's just a, it's just a waste of time. And so we want, and also, you know, potential customers out there that want to try it. We're very, very generous with pilots, proof of concepts. We don't want you to buy FME if it's not going to solve your problem. And we're, you know, we're so confident it will that we're willing to work with you to, you know, so you can prove to your superiors at work or whatever that, that it does. So and anyway, mm -hmm. we're a little off topic, but anybody who's yeah. worked for 10 minutes knows that's standard. <laughs> No, that's great. Awesome. All right. So our next question here is what role do you believe AI will play in the evolution of data integration in terms yeah. of where things are headed in the future? Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, it's basically accelerating the adoption of technology. It's, it's re reducing the learning curve, whether it's for advanced areas in FME or ultimately even to get started, uh, it's really, as we say it's safe, it's providing every single one of our customers with a team of experts that can help them. Uh, it's changing the way that we think about our documentation. Our documentation isn't written for all of you anymore. It's written for the machine. And you'll ask the machine then to explain our documentation to you for the scenario you want. So there's a that's just a start, but it basically yeah. changes everything. I, I don't, what would you add to that, Don? Yeah, I would add that these are artificial intelligence machine learning. They both, they both need data. And so they need a really strong data integration platform to build on top of, right? Um, you take either of those technologies um, without data underneath, without it being able to get access to the data that they need, you know, you know, they're nothing. They're like an Encyclopedia Britannica and you open and every page is blank or a map with no data on it or a database that doesn't have any data in it. They need data and they also need higher quality data. So I think it's really going to um, put pressure on, yes. you know, organizations like SAFE and our users to really come up with the quality tools that are needed to ensure that the data that artificial intelligence yeah. is, is working with is accurate. You don't want artificial intelligence generating these really fast, in-depth answers on bad data. You want yes. good data. Machine learning needs to learn. Well, the, the learning part is all about data. So, um, yes. yeah, so it's really going to push the evolution of data integration. Super exciting. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a real game changer for sure. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So, our last question in this section is around augmented reality. 
um, which is rapidly evolving, of course. Mm -hmm. How do you see AR integrating with data solutions and the potential it holds for industries? And can you share any insights into SAFE's plans or current projects leveraging AR? Yeah. I think Don should take this one. That's been a big focus for you in the last year or so, Don. Yeah, so um, AR is augmented reality um, is really a data problem. It's um, for us, we're focused on, you know, um, AR that's at scale one to one that um, so a utility worker or somebody out there could go and actually experience their infrastructure when they're out in the field or or experience what buildings are going to look like before they're made and, and things like that. And it's a big data integration problem of bringing data from a variety of systems to uh, to um, so people can actually see, you know, see their data. So our our current plans, of course, are we're a data pipe. There's a couple of strategies. One of them is we're working with many companies to be that data pipe. Yes. So that they can, um, like Sphere is one um, example, so that they can get access to data to, um, and we're like the the pipe to fuel their um, um, AR collaboration um, platform, yes. which is really exciting. The other one is we have an AR app, which we're working on on the phone. I should say that mostly we're targeting the tablet, but it will work on the iPhone as well. And that's a, again at this being able to use the um, the location of the device um, to be able to see things in in context. And I think Dimitri said it well. He said, "Experience your data, just don't view your data." Yes. And of course, the big thing that's coming out is um, you know app. Everybody's watching Apple to see what you know what Apple does. And um, so apparently, sometime this year, they're going to release actually. Their Breaking news, Don, I listened to my Tech Meme podcast last night and uh, ahead of CES, even though Apple isn't at CES, they announced, I think you can order your Vision Pro in the next few days. Like in a, they, they, the date was given, it's in January sometime. It'll be delivered, I think, on Groundhog Day or something like that. So, Wait, um, and when's Groundhog Day? Is that for like February sometime? I don't yeah, February know. 2nd. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. um, so wow. so I, 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 I might be wrong on exactly that, but for sure it's being sure. delivered in February and for sure you can place your order right away. And for nice. sure you can't do any of those things in Canada. <laughs> so yeah. you have to kind of use yeah. your uh, your Blaine Washington post office box, Don, and then maybe you yeah. can get one. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and those headsets, are there, they're interesting for sure. There's some industries where they do not want their <clears throat> people wandering around a construction site or something like that wearing a headset. And um and so, but but AR technology itself is independent of the um, display device, whether it's a tablet or whether it's a, um, you know, a, a headset. So it's really going to be interesting and safe. Yeah. It knows it needs data. So again, another one big technology that needs data. Yeah. yeah. And that, uh, just the last point I would make on this is that's the key piece. Because we've been around for 30 years, um, and so many regional governments, for example, and utility companies have our stuff already. We can read the data that, and we can turn it into 3D as well. So we can mm -hmm. read 2D stuff. We can turn it into 3D in a nice workflow and leave the data in place in a non-invasive way and start showing it in AR. And I think that's the secret sauce really that, that we bring to the table, whether we partner with other people, use our own stuff, whatever that is, we can yeah. be the pipe as Don said. And so that's, it's actually really exciting that that 3D work we did back in 2007 becomes useful because that stuff is now stable and solid and tried and true for years. Um, yeah. That becomes useful in this new new era where we're still on the early days. We're still in the early yeah. days of yeah. of this this tech, but I would say we're not in the last days of it. It's going to evolve. I think that the the first Apple device is probably going to be in a museum one day as sort of humorous. Um, but what follows will be pretty breathtaking. Hmm. We use yeah. a, which I just, I'll just last say, we use a phrase often at safe called ship and learn. These are for mm -hmm. things that we've innovated on that we're not exactly sure how people are going to use them. So we're going to ship it and we're going to watch and we're going to learn. I have a feeling that maybe the vision pro is a ship and learn, but who knows? <laughs> Yeah, at the risk of sounding cheesy, it's really cool to just be alive at a time where you can actually experience your data mm -hmm. firsthand. And it's really mm -hmm. exciting to see where we're safe and FME is going with AR. Yep. Excellent. All right. Oh, time for a poll, everyone. I will go ahead and launch that in the polls tab on the bottom right. Now that we've discussed some trends upcoming and current in 2024, 
We'd love to know what trends do you feel will have the largest impact on your company this year? So we'll give everyone a moment there. You can select multiple options if you if you see a couple that really stand out. Look at the votes are pouring in. They yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this seems very in line so far with um, what we've discussed today, AI being, you know, the top, the top leader no. there. One thing we, we didn't actually in the milestones, Don, talk about was our support for data streams. And look yeah. at that. that and that that yeah. you know that that I think is one that is that is it's kind of un unrealized potential in FME that we maybe haven't got the word out enough about. But it is FME is an amazing stream processing machine. Yeah, yeah. and that people you know people have done testing and they can do millions of messages a minute, right? Like, yeah, you know, and really the throughput depends on what you want to do. And um, if you want to do more, just add another engine. We built it so you can have many many engines all on the same yeah. stream. Yeah, but that's that's really interesting that folks see more and more, and that that's kind of this Internet of Things. That's the the yeah. reality of the world that that our customers are living in is that there's just a lot of data, and a, and a big chunk yeah. of that is real time. Yeah, and automations connecting apps is all about real time data integration, right? Or zero True. ETL is another True. term people have started using, where you know right. you do something in one system and automatically all the other systems, and and that's what automations is all about. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. oh, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And we are about 10 minutes away from our live Q&A session at the end here. So if you do have any questions for Dawn and Dale, definitely get those into the panel. Just a reminder there. Okay. Fantastic. And that brings us into our next section here on the future of data integration. So our first question here for you both, where do you see the data integration industry heading in the next five to 10 years? Wow, I think we've talked a lot about it. You know, AI definitely and um, being one of the drivers, the move to um, APIs, every modern system out there now has a REST API, right? And so, whereas in the past, we often would, um, and we'll continue to access the database underneath and things like that. But when we think about what, what's going on at SAFE right now, we're, in, you know, engaging all these systems and every one of them has a REST API. And so it's really nice to be able to connect to them do queries with them and um, so that you can connect these systems um, together, right? And really the future is you, you almost see more and more of these systems that are really razor focused doing their thing mm -hmm. really, really well. Um, but you still need as an organization, you still need to have that overall view of your customer to understand everything that's going on. And, and um, so I think, you know, real time is gonna be big. Um, you don't want to run reports anymore. You want to see dashboards. You want to see things in real time. Um, and um, yeah, so those are just some of the things. Yeah. I'll just chime. I, I would agree with all that Don said. I would add to it um, something around the idea that the time that'll take from when you think about the problem you want to solve and you can express the problem you want to solve somehow until you're actually solving that problem is going to continue to shrink. So it's it's basically, it's kind of like data integration at the speed of thought. Um, mm -hmm. You're still going to need to understand, you're going to need domain expertise about what the problems are you're working with. But then when you can express to a machine somehow, today you express it in FME by pointing, clicking and configuring, but perhaps you'll speak it, perhaps you'll write some prose. Um, some things are actually easier to express by drawing a picture than writing text. That picture, mm -hmm. after all, is worth a thousand words. So. Uh, I won't say that that text is the only way or the best way for doing everything that you need to do in data integration, but it is another tool that will make that speed um, be able to be accelerated as you as people solve their problems. And that, that's what I'm so, so that's why we didn't talk about that either, Don, but the, the data volume side of things and in, in the evolution of of FME at the beginning you know, 40,000 records is, oh, wow, that's 40,000 records I know, now I know, 40 million. Is, is sort of we need yeah. to be able to handle and so we haven't yeah. sat still on that and in fact the team is even as i speak <laughs> literally right now we're doing things continuously around evolving the fme processing engine so that it just laughs when it sees millions of records ha ha yeah. not all yeah. you got is what it says yeah and distributed processing you know you're seeing that with remote engines these data volumes are so big the last thing you want to do is drag them across the wire yeah. And also from a security standpoint, the last thing you want to be doing is dragging your data across the wire so you can process it. So, you know, there's some databases now that you can, they have container 
facilities inside the database. So you're going to see us put the engine yeah. right inside their database. Yeah. And um, lots of um, things for, for us to do. Yeah. Actually, I'll just, again, riff on what you just said, Don, because the you've talked about it before, the data gravity. And I think yeah. where is data integration heading in the next five to three is, yeah. is an absolute <laughs> embrace of the reality of data gravity. You yeah. have to put your processing next yeah. to the data. And that hasn't been the case for yeah. a long, long time. But, yeah. but, but, but thankfully, yeah, yeah, we're there. Another thing that separates safe from, from many of the other companies is we don't charge per connector, right? At the end of the day, the only thing we're charging for one way or the other is see how much CPU you use, right? And so when we release our AR, we're not gonna charge for it. When we, all these things, we just add all this new capabilities because we know you're gonna embrace it. You're gonna get more value from it. At the end of the day, you're gonna need bigger systems because you're using FME in more and more ways to get more and more value. So that's really, you know, the way it is. We don't charge for automations. We don't charge for server apps. We don't charge for things. We just put it in, make it super easy to use. And so you can use more and more FME all the time. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. We do have time for one or two more questions here. So mm -hmm. our next one that we'll select here is what challenges do you anticipate for the industry and how can companies, including SAFE, prepare to meet those? Yeah. Okay. I can start. I think as a company, you have to be um, prepared for change and change yeah. is only going to happen faster. Yeah. If you're a company that says the only thing constant is change, you're in really good shape. Yeah. If, um, if you're a company that really struggles with change or wants to see how things pan out, then I think that it, it could be tougher for you because these things are moving and changing so quickly. By the time you see where things are really going, um, you could be in trouble. And that's why it's safe. We've always been agnostic. We don't argue over what is the best database? What is the best this? What's the best that? We just, okay, people want it. We're going to support it. It's got data. We want to connect to it. And I think um, you have to be nimble. Um, yes. People ask me sometimes, what's your five-year road plan roadmap? I'm like, a five-year roadmap would be a waste of my time. Who saw AI coming? Who saw yeah. open API yeah. coming? Who saw all these big things coming and so we certainly know what we're doing over the next few releases and we have a, a roadmap but uh but it is flexible it's that a plan and um you know it's like we're going down the highway and we're driving toward calgary and somehow we end up in denver why do we end up in denver bah, it seemed, it, you know like the road went there we kind of follow the road so yeah what, wrong a wrong turn in albuquerque <laughs> <laughs> a classic so, old line yeah, yeah i think that you know and i might get into some trouble by saying this don but i think that Companies that don't embrace trends that are happening and the and the um, options that that gives them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be blunt and say the AI side of things, it's mm -hmm. a it's a pretty big existential risk to yeah. not embrace AI. And so I think you have to be looking at what's what's the the environment in which you're working and seeing how you can embrace the new technologies, embrace the things, and get the value out of them. And yeah. some things maybe there aren't isn't going to be value and then decide yeah. quickly yeah. and move on to yeah. the next thing. But you, yeah. but as Don said, if, if you aren't willing to embrace change and to be curious yeah. and innovate, yeah. you know, Elon Musk, I know he's a controversial character, but he long ago said that moats, like long ago, there was the idea that a, a business needs to build a moat to protect themselves. And Musk said that the actual real um, protection is to just out innovate everybody. Don't, don't worry mm -hmm. about protecting what you got, just keep innovating and that will be your, your advantage. So, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Wait, more yeah. time on innovation, less time on moats. Yeah, yeah. And have fun. Have yes. fun. Yes. Yeah. You know, like like I, I've said this to my daughter, you know, like she's doing something that she really enjoys. She's having fun. Other people may not be having fun. If you're having fun, the person who's not having fun, you're just going to beat the crap out of them. Pardon the word crap, but it's true, right? They just can't compete. Have you ever noticed that somebody who's good at something thinks it's fun? It's, yes. it's weird the way that is. And it's safe. We're having fun. This is a lot of fun. And um, you cannot compete with fun. If you're just in this yeah. thing because, oh, I think data integration is a really good business. And you're not going to be able to compete with people who are like, yeah, data integration. This is fun. That's, yeah. So yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of American and Canadian football. And I always feel like the quarterbacks that are smiling and jumping and like a little bit exuberant, I think yeah. they, they do better. They're out there having fun and they, they yeah. ultimately, I think, do better than the guys that look like they're just uh, calling it in. So I know if you make a mistake, right? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. So I think that's a great note to wrap us up on for these questions we've got laid out here this morning. Before we move on to our resources here, though, I just want to extend a big thank you, Donna Dale, for sharing your perspectives and your experiences today. We really appreciate your time and it's been a privilege to delve into these topics with you. I'm sure our audience has gained a lot of value and insights as well. So thank you. It's a good way to kick off the year for sure. It is. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, so just some resources here to wrap us up before we move on to the Q and A. Got your questions? Oh, there's there's going to be some. There's some exciting questions pouring in in the questions tab. I know Don's going to want to talk about them. <laughs> oh, I haven't even looked. I'm I'm waiting until Elizabeth tells me I can it's, look. It's, it's like Christmas, Don. You're going to be so excited by the top one right now. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. I'm not, awesome. I'm not look until Elizabeth says look. <laughs> All right. So yes, some resources here. If you are newer to FME, just a brief intro to our platform. Don, would you like to take us through this slide briefly before we wrap sure, up? Sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the early days, we called it FME desktop and FME server, but then everybody thought they were the same. And um, we had talked with people, they're going to use, oh, no, I'm not big enough to need servers. So then um, as part of the rebrand, we gave them different names. So at least people would look to understand how those two components that work together and that's another big strategy it's safe making them work closer and closer together all the time yeah so yeah fantastic yeah yeah lots of great resources here to help you get started um, and dive deeper into materials on fme and safe we have a free ebook spatial data for the enterprise so short link there also yeah. our fme academy guided learning at your fingertips. I know that we've recently had a refresh, total yeah. revamp of the academy. So that's- um, Those really will great. know that now the academy has a really good URL, academy.safe.com. And there's a bit Whoa. of a teaser for people. Anytime you see something.safe.com, you know, it's part of our new platform. So there you go. So wow. yeah, yeah. Awesome. if it has like slash F slash something, then you know, it's not quite. Are you foreshadowing that there may be other changes to this slide in the future? Don? I am more than foreshadowing. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're going to have some work ahead of you. You're going to have to update this slide in a few weeks. Yeah, I am yeah. excited. Yeah, webinars. Check out our webinars. Yeah. Soon that URL will also change, hopefully. So yeah. that'll be coming down the pipeline. Yep. And next steps. So contact us if you'd like to chat about anything data, info at safe.com. And our mm -hmm. FME Accelerator course. It's just 90 minutes. Yep. And yep. it is a really great starter starter for getting your your hands on fme and learning the basics there perfect okay claim your community badge all right i will drop that link in the chat here in a moment um, but yeah claim your community badge if you are a part of the community as a thank you for joining today's webinar if you aren't a part of the community definitely check it out it's a great place to network with other users alike and also fme experts so there's the code there i just dropped it in all right, and that okay. brings us to the end. Now is the time, Don. You may take a look oh, at the questions, Pat. I'm look at the first question. <laughs> yeah, and we can also sort by upvotes. It'll help us, yeah, pick out a couple here to, to answer live. I think, Don, you should take Oliver's uh, one there about yeah, questions. And, um, yeah, and Oliver, that is what we're working on right now. We're working on this thing called data, um, data virtualization, which is the ability to put an API on top of... Um, of any data that FME supports. And um, it's gonna have everything you need so that you get good performance. You'll be able to support you know, really quick. You will, every call won't have to invoke a workspace if it has a static answer. And, um, and part of that is the thing that Dale alluded to, this ability to tell using OpenAI what your, your spec wants, and it'll generate you an open API spec, which then can be, two things could happen to it. One, FME flow will, use it to lay down the groundwork for the data virtualization layer but then you could also give it to form and form could in, in, ingest it and build the calls on the other side so you'll be able to have um you know both ways so it's going to be um super super exciting it's going to do for 
Oh, go ahead, Dale. Yeah. Well, just the actions part also, because once you've built that open API spec and you've implemented it using FME, as long as it's on FME Cloud or someplace publicly accessible, now suddenly you can make actions inside of Chat GPT. Yeah. Like Don, I think Don, you and I had sat there and mocked up that truck API. Yeah, Presumably that's right. You yeah. can supply that, a, the, when it was implemented, you supply that back to Chad GPT and others actions. And if I start yeah. asking it, hey, do we have any Silverado mm -hmm. trucks in our inventory? Mm -hmm. It would know mm -hmm. to call that and answer. So I think yeah. it's gonna be, we're almost gonna need a diagram that's gonna map all the ways that these things kind of work yeah. together because they they, yeah. they, yeah. they complement each other in so many interesting ways. It, and yeah. as Oliver, you're right, the last four words there, it would be amazing, it will be amazing, will is be what amazing. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that OpenAI has this ability to, you can give it any open API spec and then you can start talking yes. to your data is just um, really exciting. Yeah. But again, it's all about the data, right? The data is the foundation of everything and that's why we're super excited. And I guess I would also just say that our goal is to make the the time it takes to go from the idea, like in Don's case, for you know to make an API for his truck database till yeah. that's implemented and ready to go, that's going to be unbelievably short time with FME. Yeah. And I, I think from kind of thought to done will be so short. And now you'll be able to leverage that a few minutes later inside of OpenAI with through those actions. So it's it's going to be yeah. very exciting. And this work has started. It's not like this is, you know, and um, we want to ship it by the end of this year. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna and there's there's a bunch of hard work, unfortunately, or fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh to do it well. I mean we could do something we could do something quickly right away, but we want to also do it well. So yeah. I don't think there's a UC in 2024, Don. No, there is not. Our next one's in 2025 in Seattle. Yeah, so, and I think you did you did yeah. uh, a a mission down there to check yeah, out or like yeah. a and it's in downtown Seattle. It's going to be great. Um, we have a room for um, about two thousand people, and we think we're going to be very close to that, if not hit that. So um, announcements will come out soon. We we decided to do it in Seattle this time, uh, not Vancouver, make it easier for all our American friends, and yeah. um, and Seattle's a beautiful city as well. And it's um, yeah, so there we go. Good. I don't think we'll be able to go to a Seahawks game, though, because I think it won't Probably be one day. Not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we so sorry about the, that. Uh, we can go see the, um, the Kraken. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll get Kraken in Seattle. That's right. So. Awesome. Don right. might want to take the next one about digital twin stuff. Okay, let's oh. see. Yeah, so um, so we digital twins is is huge. Again, a big data data integration challenge. Um, the word digital twins has people um, somewhat confused in the sense that some people, when they think of digital twin, they think of full high, high fidelity. Um, but really a digital twin is just being able to see your data in contact. If you've been in a Tesla, Tesla has a digital twin, but nobody would ever say that it's high yes. fidelity. It shows you what's important to you as a driver. And, um, and similarly, when we talk with clients, they've had digital twins the moment they put infrastructure in their database under, in the, under the ground, right? That's a digital twin of their infrastructure. And so we're working to make sure that we um, support digital twins with AR. Those are natural you know, cousins, I'll say. You might wanna visualize your digital twin. And also real-time digital twins at airports, for example, YVR, they, um, and they use FME to help power to get the data to that so they can see everything that's happening in their airport in real time. So digital twins are, you know, this intersection of, of several things that, that we're working on and um, data is again, front and center. So we're continuing to work on that. Yeah. I think we should take Mark's uh, question about uh, AI functionality. It was so interesting. You know, we we worked hard and got that to market in September or August of uh, last year, and um, very excited about what we had our, our early foray with the AI assistant. A handful of places, and the first feedback to customers was, "How do we shut this off?" Uh, which wasn't what the team was thinking would happen. And so, but I do under, I know I came across as very pro AI uh, generative AI earlier, but I I do recognize there are organizations for whom there's significant issues with that. And so we are aware that we need to have a switch somewhere and a central administration that you can yeah. use to cut it off. There, there is a knowledge base article actually on yeah. how 
um, the IT group can just knock out one domain. We, we bounce everything through our own um, yeah. AI server. Yeah. And if you just knock yeah. that out, then you're, um, then it will be uh, disabled. And we handle that gracefully and nicely uh, in the product. But we can also look at kind of other ways of centrally shutting yeah. it off. Um, yeah. Because uh, Mark is right. It is still an emerging thing and IT policies have to catch up in many places. Yeah. Right. And and we're using the Azure one, so our yes. stuff does not go out into the public, if you know what I mean. Like that, yeah. and even internally at Safe, we have um, Enterprise yeah. uh, OpenAI, which is Microsoft Azure, and it it does not leave our any data, any queries does not leave our domain. And we've done that the same thing. The last thing we want is, um, and we take security very very seriously, is have anything that's done through FME somehow make it into the wider world so you can be rest assured that uh you know we're not doing that now if you use our the transformers in the hub and you're using your own where you have to use your own credentials well that depends on the credentials that you give it whether you give it the open api ones the public ones or if you give it your own you know your own azure um credentials but uh yeah it's a good question yeah 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 well, I want to actually go way down to the bottom. We've got lots of one voters here, but Brendan's question about a third party framework like ACE to enable support of many operating systems at once. Uh, I'll just say that Don and I, it's a history story here because we started off, I think Don, you were a Windows guy and I was a Linux guy. So I, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's interesting. So long ago, we can't remember, but I know it was different. And so that yeah. meant from the very first day, Don and I had to architect FME to be ready to go um, yeah. uh, to work anywhere. Now, in modern times, we do use QT, that framework for our user interface, which lets yeah. us do multiple operating systems. But the rest of it is just us being thoughtful and careful from yeah. the beginning of time. And yeah. so um, that's yeah. what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. High performance C++. Yeah. Yep. Which we've evolved over the years. Um, yeah. It is not, there's actually very few lines of code that Don and I wrote that haven't been upgraded or modified yeah. on, in yeah. some automated way or, or else deleted by the team. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, and that's another thing we're always, you know, that's the other <clears throat> thing is you always have technical debt that you always have to continue to improve, continue to yes. improve. Right. And, and it just happens. I mean, technology improves. And again, as a company, you have to always embrace the new tech. You can't be happy with the, the code you wrote 30 years ago and just leave it because every language gets better, faster, and um, you, if you embrace new features, yeah. Uh, I'd like to try a crack at Bruce's question. Um, will there ever be a browser-based workbench app? And I hinted at it earlier in this call. I never say never again to quote a Bond film title. Um, so uh, there is groundwork where we are obviously looking at that um, but I, I don't know, what would be your reaction there, Don? I, again, I wouldn't say never, but what's your reaction? Yeah, I would never say never either. Um, a little bit that, yeah, yeah. And it would have to be, we, some people remember in the early days, we had a, a way to view workspaces in, in Flow. And it was trying to redo Workbench from scratch. It was a terrible idea. I'll take responsibility for it. And we killed it and nobody complained. So that told us everything yes. we needed, you know. So, um, yeah. So, so it's a, there's that product, but, yeah, yeah, product market. Yeah, that's so powerful, right? I mean, that's yes. part of the thing, and um, direct access to data is, yeah. So, so anyway, we we are we are laying groundwork. It's certainly um, something that we're watching carefully, and we are preparing. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think there's and the other exciting thing is, is some of the work to do to prepare is good ideas anyway, right? Yes. It's like, yes. Putting a REST API on top of Engine. That is an amazingly yep. good idea anyway. Yep. And so if that needs to be done to support this, then let's do that. And then and then Dale and I have been at this long enough to know by the time when, when that's done, who knows what all the different avenues that it, it opens up, right? Yeah. It's gonna be big. Yep. 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 There we go. Okay. I think we're at time. Yeah. All right. So yeah, just one final last big thank you to Don and Dale for your time. And of course, our whole audience for joining us here today. Um, if we weren't able to get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up on that as well uh, via email. And if you do have a brief moment to fill out our webinar survey, we really appreciate any feedback helps us continually approve our program there. So I did drop the link in the chat. I can drop that in here again. And yeah, hope you all have a great rest of your day or evening, depending on what time it is for you. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and thanks so much, everybody, and have a great 2024, and hope to see you all on the road somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Or on a future webinar because we're plugging those yeah. webinars. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Don, always Thanks. a great time talking with you yeah, about always this. Always fun, Dale. Yeah. Great yeah. job, Elizabeth. Take care. Yeah. yeah thank thank you. you. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye for now.